Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a photo flow out of a camera, like you can see here. And we're just going to start by going to File New and making an image of the size 640 by 480 and click OK. Now we've got our new image. And I'm going to make a nice gradient background by going to my Blend tool and set the foreground color to a nice color blue, but you can use any color you like. And I'm using 5176BA. Click OK. And the background color is black. And then go to your gradient foreground to background. And the shape is set to radial. And then I'm just going to stroke from the middle to the side. Like this. And now I've got a nice background. And now I'm going to put my camera image in here and I've got it on my desktop and I can just click and drag it in like this and if you're on a Mac this might not work what you can do is go to file and open as layers so the first thing I'm going to do is go to my rotate tool and my toolbox I'm going to rotate this, rotate this camera a bit so it's facing upwards something like this and then click rotate and now I'm going to go to my perspective tool in my toolbox and click on my camera and what I'm going to do now is lower the opacity of the camera layer to zero because when you use your perspective tool and you don't lower the opacity to zero you will see the original camera image below it and that's a bit distracting so that's why I just put it to zero here and now I'm going to change the perspective I'm going to make my to something facing upward a little bit more Let's see how this works. This bit. This bit more. Just how you like it, really. And I like this, so I'm going to click Transform. And now you can't see it because the opacity is zero, so I'm going to move this all the way up to 100 again. Then go to my Move tool and move this to the corner. And then go to my Scale tool. Click on my image. And make sure that, that these links are ticked. And I'm going to scale from the corner. You always need to scale it from the corner. Never from the uh, middle bits. Because then the aspect ratio won't be okay again. It won't, be, won't still be okay. So scale from the corner. As you can see the original image is still behind here. And that's what's happened to, to the perspective tool as well. And that's why I made it uh, opacity zero uh, earlier. So uh, anyway, I think this is small enough here. So I'm going to click scale. And there we go. And again, with my move tool, move this to the corner where I want it to. So now it's time to open the photo layer. And again, I'm going to just drag this from my desktop into the image. And there we've got a new layer in my layer dialog, as you can see here. And what I'm going to do now is again use the perspective tool to make this in a flowing motion. Click on this. And again, I'm going to make the opacity of the layer zero. So it won't be in the way. And now just move this. And this to where you want it to flow out of the camera. Maybe a little bit more like this. So something like this is fine. And click transform. And there we go. And as you can see now, there's nothing visible. And that's because the opacity is still at zero. So back to 100 and we can see what we're doing. On this photo layer, I'm going to go to layer. Layer boundary size and make sure these links are ticked, uh, linked, and then move this up and then click center so it's nicely in the middle and click on resize. And now the layer is bigger, you can't see it now, but you can see it when I'm going to use the eye warp filter. Go to filters, distorts, eye warp. And in iWarp, I'm going to set the reform mode to move and the deform radius to 63. Now I'm going to make this image bigger so you get a bigger preview. And what you can see here is that there is room around the image. And that's why what we've just created by enlarging the layer boundary. So what I'm going to do is click on reset and then this will be a sharp image again. And now I'm going to move this to the side a bit so I can see what I'm doing in comparison to the original image. And I'm going to move this like this, so it flows out of the camera, and then make this a bit round to the middle, and then move this. And then make a big dent in here, so you get this floating, flowing 
motion and feeling to it in here as well and this move this out a bit this in and in here a little bit and here a little bit and I think this needs a little bit more it's always a bit of a guess so what I'm going to do now is in here click OK and see what the end result is and that's actually pretty good so I'm going to leave it at this but as you can see this doesn't really look good with the lens and this just coming out of it needs to be a bit transparent this bit so what I'm going to do is go to my photo layer right click on it and click add layer mask and choose white full opacity and click add and now I'm going to make my foreground and background color back to default again by clicking on this icon here and it's black and white go to your blend tool and the shape is still set to radial and that's just great that works and make sure you're on your layer mask by clicking on it once and then just stroke like this and let's see what looks bad this now nah, bit, bit too much usually it takes a few, few times this looks pretty good already but I'm gonna make it look a little bit better make these edges a little softer so the transparency looks a little bit better by going to my paintbrush tool and can set the opacity to about 25 percent I'm using a fuzzy brush circle 17 scale a little bit more than that let's see something about five and then just carefully click here a few times so it's it gets a little bit more transparent and the edges are a little bit less visible and I like this this looks pretty good so now I'm going to go back to my layer dialog, right click on the layer mask and click apply layer mask. And now all it needs are some finishing touches. So what I'm going to do first is on my photo layer go to filters, enhance, sharpen. And I'm going to sharpen this, let's see, I'm going to make this rock here, this bit, a nice focal point. And I'm going to sharpen it by about 43 is fine click OK and that just looks a little bit better and a bit crisper so that's nicer and um, I'm gonna apply a drop shadow first of all on my camera layer go to filters light and shadow drop shadow and use the default settings of 8815 make sure allow resizing is not ticked and click OK and now on the photo layer we're gonna make the same drop shadow but we've got a little bit of a problem here with the transparent area so the way we are gonna solve this is by going right clicking on the photo layer and then click alpha to selection and now you can see that the transparent bit is not selected and now we're gonna make a drop shadow and everything that's inside the selection won't have the drop shadow it will only be here on the outside drop shadow so all I need to do is go to filters repeat drop shadow and this will apply a drop shadow here on the sides as you can see in the layer of the drop shadow it's just on the sides so that solves that there won't be a drop shadow underneath the transparent bit so all I need to do is go to select none and the image is done and I hope you enjoyed my video and if you did then maybe you'd like to watch my other videos and subscribe and thank you for watching.